in a handbasket. My name is Kenny Burkhead, and uh, here with me is my brother. Say hello. Hello. It's me, Denny. Denny, settle down. You're, you're ruining, you're soiling this show already. I just get so nervous when we do podcasts because I just want to do good for the Lord. And that's what we're here for. We're here to do good for the Lord uh, in podcast form. It's not every day you can turn on your iPhones, those little uh, coffins that we hold in our hands. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always looking down at them. Everybody is always looking down at them. They're never looking up to the heavens. 24-7. They just, mm-hmm. they're always looking down, never looking up where they should be looking up. And what is up there? Tell me, Denny. Those beautiful pearly gates that I just cannot wait to see. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this little podcast is uh, going to be a tale. Uncle Dave is also up there. <laughs> uh, praise Uncle Dave. Miss you, Uncle Dave. R.I.P. Love you, Uncle Dave. He was the best. Uh, you weren't necessarily a saint, but you weren't necessarily a sinner either. So he, you he, ma- you probably made it. He had the best fireworks around the holidays. What kind of fireworks did he have? What what, what was the the big one? What was the big one that he brought up every year? El Rancho. El Rancho. The one he bought because he's an over the road truck driver, right? He's an over the road truck driver. You remember that, my uncle Dave. <laughs> Wait, he was an over, like, what do you mean over the road? He traveled across the country in a, in a truck. truck. And he used to go down to these southwestern border towns around, you know, Mexico, uh, New Mexico, Texas, all this stuff. Same diff. Yeah. Uh, he would always stop at these truck stops down there that had basically illegal fireworks. And uh, he would always buy a big one for a finale called El Rancho. And uh, it cost $100 for that one, but, God, he just loved doing Fourth of July with his family. It was exciting. I, I can't really go into detail over a radio show or well, a podcast. I, I don't think you'd want to go into too much details because of the last Fourth of July church cookout. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, there's, there's still some uh, court dates for the, the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, some lawyers got involved with El Rancho taking out uh, a big part of the congregation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's just say that the egg salad was spilt. The, and, the uh, deviled eggs were ruined. The, <laughs> Sister Dolores, uh, let's just say that she can't see anymore, and she probably won't see anymore. El Rancho. It's not looking good from what I've seen on the Facebook post that her uh, husband made the other day. It's not that El Rancho exploded near her face or anything. I think it was more so El Rancho was so bright. Like, everybody had been warned. But- it's illegal in, my, in, in all 48 states. What, Continental. A, what about Hawaii? I think they had their own laws as far as uh, the tobacco and firearms and stuff like that. So El Rancho is probably going to be all right. In Hawaii, yeah. I think it's where it's actually, uh, I think that's where they actually produce it and make it. And then it sneaks into Mexico and through the border. And then to my dear old Uncle Dave until he passed his last Independence Day. (laughs) I forgot that that was the thing that he passed, but somehow the the family is also in court. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we have to represent him. Cousin uh, cousin Randy, our prayers go up to you. Uh, we hope you win this one for us, for Uncle, Uncle Dave. He would be honored. So this show, we're just two brothers. Two brothers in Christ. We're brothers in real life, and we're brothers in Christ. My name is Kenny. My name is Denny. Got my brother Denny. Uh, our dad was Benny Burkhead, and uh, he he led this church to uh, prominence throughout the seventies and eighties. Uh, we now have over a hundred thousand people every single Sunday. Some in the pews, some at home listening on Facebook Live. Mm-hmm. 
Technology, PTL. And uh, our father was kind of, um, he was controversial, to say the least. Wouldn't you say, mm-hmm, Danny? To say the least. Uh, he was somewhat unconventional with his preachings. I wouldn't say that he went directly by the Bible. But it was, I mean, he... he Listen, I'm just going to tell you guys, times were different when Dad was doing it, and he didn't like to tickle ears. He liked to tell you, you were going straight to hell. You know, he wasn't a big ear tickler. That's Mm-mm. what. That's one. Th- we actually had that on the marquee on the <laughs> at the front of the church. It said, "No ear tickler." Benny, Benny Burkhead, yep, not what, an ear tickler. When he ran for Senate, that's what it said. That was his big campaign stance. Not an ear tickler. Burn Benny Burkhead here. Not an ear tickler. Just like that. It was very phonetic when he said it, and that's why he did not win the center race. But he did win Magistrate District Three. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I voted for him. I voted. I voted. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, okay. I, I voted. So what's the first topic? Uh, Kenny? Well, I was going to explain. Uh, our dad just passed away. He did? Uh, that, Danny. I have a hard time accepting it. How long has it been now? Two hours. It's been two hours ago. And our first inclination was, hey, dad, uh, croat, let's start a podcast. That'd be fun. Yeah. No. It's been a couple of weeks now. Uh, I think we're finally coming to terms with it. But in, in, in his, our own ways, in his wake, um, he decided to give us the church. Mm-hmm. We have been youth pastors, both of us. We're a tag team youth pastor mm-hmm. uh, machine. We go down there. We really rally the kids up mm-hmm. every single Sunday. We even have a Saturday night service once a month. Mm-hmm. So after all these years... Being good boys, we are now big boy pastors. That's right. And we're going to run this church. No disrespect to Dad, RIP, chilling up there with God in heaven. Can't wait to be there. But we're going to run this church so much better than you ever thought you could. Benny, you're decent, dude. But uh, <laughs> dude, 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 your sons, we're going to be twice as good as you, Dad. We're going to have people getting saved at least every Sunday. At least one or two people every Sunday. That's a given. I think before we dive into uh, to heck in a handbasket, I think we should talk about, you know, just some nice stories about Dad. I'll start with one. Um, when I was six years old, uh, we, we were watching Caddyshack. We were watching Caddyshack as a family. You were there. I know you're just one year younger, but you were there. I don't know if you remember this or not. Yeah, I was laying on the floor playing with my Hot Wheels, and you guys were watching it. Uh, now, if if you remember, there was that crazy old gopher on that movie. Do you remember? Vaguely. Vaguely, yeah. Same here, actually. But I knew that it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life around that time. I look over. Our dad, Benny, he's not even laughing. Oh, gosh. Do you remember this? Uh, now that you mention it, yeah, that was when it all started. That was when it all started. So uh, I turned around and I was like, Dad, why aren't you laughing? That gopher's hilarious, dude. Dude. I call, I call my dad dude sometimes. And he turned, turned to me, looked directly in my eyes. He said, son, I lost my laugh. I asked Dad, "Yeah, how'd you lose it? He said it was a big thing. I remember the conversation, and I remember it turned kind of dark, and he told me to leave. Yeah, that is right. You did have to leave so the I room. I didn't catch all of it, but yeah, I remember you telling you me. You peed your pants and uh, started crying, and mm-hmm. then you walked out the room. Yep. And here's what he told me. He said, son, I went to the Ringling Brothers Circus when I was a kid. Those clowns were just too funny for my taste. 
and I'll laugh my 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 laugh box right out of my throat. Oh my god! Doctors didn't know how to describe it. Didn't know how to explain it. They said couldn't catch it. Like put it back in. Didn't know. Nope. Wow! Clowns started juggling it. It was gone after that. Wow! Wow, indeed, man. Yeah, do you have any stories about Dan? I tell you what. Not as personal as that one, but I do recall one time. Remember that old station wagon that we had when we were real little? Oh, the one with the wood paneling? Yeah, the old one. And uh, Dad used to take us fishing in it down by the lake. This wasn't one of those days. But I just remember loading up the fishing So we weren't in fishing it. that day. No, I just, I think about fishing when I think about that car. But also, we had that car when this happened. That that car did have fins. Yeah, dude. You know that. When I said wood paneling, I actually meant to say it had scales. Yeah. It had a, it had wood panel it had scales that looked like a wood finish. The color was similar. Basically it was like wood chips kind of stacked on each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That car. I know that one. Anyway. So summer vacation. I'm out of school. It was like a Thursday, I think, because we didn't have any church or anything. And you know how Dad got on those days where we didn't have church. So he's all moping around the house and stuff, and Mom was in there doing the laundry. I think you were going to Boy Scout camp. Hmm. Mm, that's a hot topic we're going to have to get into later. <sighs> Yike, <Yikarumba>. we'll, <laughs> we'll see if we can dive that deep. Yeah. Anyway... I was too young to go, so it was basically just me and Dad, and he was watching some uh, Joe Olstein on TV, you know, st- staying in the game, man. You got to practice. If you he was get- learning. He, he was, was learning. He was learning. He was learning how to be a good, decent man as mm-hmm. well as a good, decent feature. Exactly, and that was the best way to learn how to be a great person was through Joe Olstein on TV. So anyway... He says, son, look at me. So I looked up at him. I said, yeah, Pop, what's up? What did he say? He said, today's your lucky day. No. Yup. And I was like, what What do you mean? What, what are we doing? He goes, I know how much you love Dirty Mary's Dairy Bar. We're going to go get you a peanut butter milkshake from there. And I freaking about died. Like, I thought I was in heaven. I thought I saw our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself when that happened. You had a peanut butter milkshake. Well, this is where the story's getting to about our old Pop Benny. So, I mean, did you get the milkshake, though? Listen, just pull, pull your pants back up, Kenny, and wait for it, okay? All right. So... So it's peanut butter. Me okay. and Dad get in the old station wagon. He had us turn the key three times to get started and pump the gas pedal. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, man, that, like car, that. That, sound, that car sounded so weird. It did, but it's it's iconic now in our little childhood memories. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's iconic in our memories. <laughs> in our memories. Just like Benny. So anyway, we get going down the road. I remember we were listening to uh, Tom Brokaw. On the radio. He was a radio host. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. So we get to the dairy bar. We pull up. And walking down the street is a homeless man. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we parked. And Dad, he looked over at that guy as we pulled up in the car. And he said, you see that guy? And I said, yeah. And he said, you know we need to do the right thing, right? What did he say the right thing was? What did he do? Oh, well, hang on. And I said, you know, I didn't notice something. I said, sure, Dad, let's do it. Whatever you think is right, I, I follow you. I follow you in your footsteps because everything you do is right and nothing you do is wrong. And he said, that's exactly right, son. And so we got out of the car, and he said, follow me. And we walked over towards the sidewalk where the homeless man was. And he asked the homeless man if he wanted a peanut butter milkshake. And the guy said, sure. So dad 
gave him my peanut butter milkshake. And then we went home. So it wasn't your lucky day. He died never giving me a peanut butter milkshake. Ever? Ever. Like you guys never went back? Never went back again. He got so busy with the with the pastorship. And he never took you back? Never. To Dirty Mary's? He never took me back to the dairy bar. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I seem to recall yeah. him taking you there a lot, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you know, I at least... I had about two peanut butter milkshakes a day. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that may just explain the size difference between us, but... Uh, Probably. Uh, you know, Benny was always cool to me. Dad was always, like, a real good man. He fed me. He yep. gave me a peanut butter milkshake uh, he, he, on the dime. He definitely gave you plenty. Anytime I was say, way Daddy, more than, da- way more than I ever got. Daddy, give me a milkshake. He would do it. He would put down everything that he was doing. Peanut butter milkshake, Dad. He wouldn't hesitate. He would not hesitate. It seemed he was always busy when I asked for one, though. You just had to know how to ask him. All you had to do is just change your voice a little bit. Peanut butter milkshake, Pappy. And Happy. Yeah, we could hack on like that sometimes, didn't you? Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, Dad was a he was a good guy. We'll probably ask more stories about him at another point. Um, you know, he was beloved. People followed him, did not question any weird thing that he may have requested of the church. Uh, and, and, boy, he did request a lot of weird things. Uh, mm-hmm. We can get into more of that later, but this is going to be more of a podcast about the adventures of me and my brother, Danny, here, uh, where we talk about the ways that we're going to improve on the church. Our dad, Benny, you know, he he was old school. He just didn't know how to connect with the kids. like, like Old, regular Baptist. He was just the standard, uh, here, here's, here's the word, uh, listen to it. If you don't believe me, uh, here's some other words. I'm going to keep on speaking until it does get into your head. And it did. It got into a lot of people's heads. He was not an ear tickler. So, uh, Denny, let's hear one of your patented ideas to improve upon this church. Well, I think we need a church band. I think we need more music. What would you suggest? Like, what kind of instruments would you like to hear in this band? I don't want to hear the old, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's a choir. We got to be miserable all day. It's like, come on, let's have some fun. Like, God would want us to have fun, so let's get some guitars. Let's get some vintage synthesizers in here, and let's just burn this place down. Have a good time. Literally and figuratively. For the Lord. Let's play music and... Let there be a joyful noise. It's like Palm 98.4 says, make joyful noise unto the Lord all. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go from the Bible and we're going to make a joyful noise. And that's one thing about Benny's old band that we had in there. That choir would literally walk in every day saying, ugh, ugh. They didn't even like that music. How did they expect anybody else to? This song again? Mm-hmm. Heaven's name on high mm-hmm. for the seventy fourth time this week. Uh, no thanks. Mm-hmm. What is that title of that song? Which one? Heaven send your name on high. What's the one they always sing? Um, I'm trying to think. I think it's Heaven send your name on high. Is it Here I Am, Lord? That's the one. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. But we had to go through the whole thing every Sunday. You know how long that song lasts? Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we had to practice that song. Every Wednesday. Ten times. That song is six and a half minutes long. That's over an hour. Yeah, it's only one of the songs. Mm-hmm. But Dad loved it. So we went down to the Dave and Buster's the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we thought it would be cool to... Get a new PlayStation 2 
for the rec room for the kids. Uh, you know, we we're former <laughs> we're former youth pastors now, mm-hmm. uh, and we're getting ready to become big boy pastors. We just want to give one last thing. So, me and Danny thought it'd be a good idea. Now, the church don't have a lot of money, so we thought it'd be a, a smart idea just to go win one a PlayStation Two. How hard could a claw game be? Exactly. <laughs> So we took all of our change. We got out of the car between our couch cushions. Out of the church van, am I right? Out of the church pan, the frying pan, as, <laughs> as we like to call Poor it. Van. No, we, no, we got it out of the church pan. Oh, I thought we got it out of the you, van. I, no, you were actually digging through the church pan. I was digging through the church van. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what was going on. Had my hands deep in the cushions, and then you had, uh, you know, the frying pan we we hand out. Yeah, I at know the beginning of church. Yeah, the pan. Yeah, the the frying pan. We don't always call it the frying pan, but sometimes people come in. And it's like well, this is how our church is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to have like a, you know, a little tray. We're going to have a frying pan to put your money in. Actually, I refer to it as the frying pan because if you don't put money in it. Guess what's going to happen to you? Happen to you. Happen to you. We call it the frying pan. So put the money in the pan so we can keep the church going. Put the money in the pan so we can keep this church going. We are not taxed. That's why we call it the frying pan. Yep. Mm-hmm. So uh, we got all this change. It ended up being about $137 in dimes and nickels. <laughs> Took it down to Dave and Buster's. And, uh, Good times were had. You know those games where you have to stack blocks? Well, that PlayStation 2 has been hanging there for about three or four years now. You have mm. to stack blocks, and then if you win enough times, it spins right on out. Needless to say, we ran through all that change pretty quick. And, mm-hmm. you know, being the good people of our church, we wa- we still wanted to give back. It's like, you know, what could it hurt to spend some of the church's money to try to win this PlayStation 2? It is a Dave & Buster's. It's a... It's- you cannot find a new PlayStation 2 still in the box. Like, it's a really worthy investment. If you could find one on eBay, it's possibly $1,000. So what if I wanted to spend 5 or $10 on a couple appetizers? We get hungry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody would blame us for, for eating at Dave & Buster's while we're there trying to get the kids We're trying to help. We're trying to give back to the church. Like, of course... We're going to get famished in there. If we don't eat, then those kids are going to be deprived of a PlayStation 2. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Dave & Buster's was only a few hours away, and the church man, you know, doesn't get the best gas mileage, but... We're giving back. We're giving back, exactly. you got to take a little bit to give a little bit. You know, that's the old saying, you know? Well, you know, the church fan doesn't get great gas mileage, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the trick. This whole uh, this whole trip, I should say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> uh, Go on. We actually got plane tickets. We was like, you know what? We had to drive to the airport, though. We did. Okay. Well, you got me there. We did have to drive the van 
around the block a few times. We just wanted to listen to some jams for a couple hours before mm-hmm. taking this long. De La like, Soul. We wanted to get some jams out. We turned up the De La Soul. They're a good Christian group. Mm-hmm. Ran around the block for about five hours in the church van. Finally made it to the airport. Uh, tickets to this Dave and Buster's in Omaha that runs about four hundred. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Hmm? I, I don't. I probably shouldn't say. Either way, it didn't cost the church that. I mean, th- think about it. No matter how much it cost, we're giving the money right back to the church. It's an investment. Okay? It's a, it's an investment of how you know we're helping. We are helping these kids have fun with Madden 2006. Listen, listen, these kids, they go home. They don't have a PlayStation 2. They don't have anything like that. Their mom and their dad sit there with their nose in their phones all day, and they don't give these kids any attention. If they don't have youth pastors or regular big boy pastors now to teach them how to have fun, they're not going to have anybody. You know, we, we take these buses up the hollows and the roads and uh, through the suburbs, and we get these kids that don't have anything, and we want them to come to VBS and regular church service and all of the great things that we have to offer, and we want them to be able to play Madden 2006. So, a couple hours down the line, we realize... Uh, Okay, I'll just go out on a record. We spent a few grand. It's an investment. That's what we had to tell the board, and we're going to continue telling the board that it's an investment. PlayStation 2, couple Mint grand, Dave condition. and Buster. Mint condition, right in the box. So, a couple Mint grand on. Box. PlayStation 2. Best generation of PlayStation. Ever, Please. these kids don't even know. And not only that, it came with a couple games, mm-hmm. good games too. Now we had to throw a couple of them out. Those were not church friendly. Well, games. yeah, it came packed with Grand Theft Auto Three. We saved that one for our boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we are Christian, but sometimes you just have to you have to color outside the lines. You you can't hide the world away from these kids. Or when they finally get out in the world, they'll they'll be shell shocked. They'll they'll never they'll never they, understand. We it's we, going to be fine. We take two days out of the year for a special little you know kind of thing. We take the game. We take Grand Theft Auto Three, and we just say, "Boys, have at it!" And whatever questions they have about the game, we put them into a suggestion box. We we tell them. We tell them, uh, write your questions, put them on a little piece of paper, put them in this box. Now, will they be answered? Uh, I, you know, I don't know if we can go down that road. We say, you know, when you're older, maybe we can answer some of these questions. Sometimes you don't have to give a kid an answer. Sometimes you just have to let them ask the questions because then it helps them get it out of their system. You know, I got one the other day. Oh, you put out a question? Yeah, from the box. And uh, a young member of our church who will remain anonymous on here because this is a public forum. But, of course, the card does have their name and their age and their information mm-hmm. and their, you know, hair color, eye color, body type, um, things like that. Things that so are important. It's, it, was probably, it was probably Billy, wasn't it? I'm not going to say, but be, uh, the person had a question, obviously, he did. So, yeah. So, it said, I was playing Grand Theft Auto the other night when everyone was in bed. And a woman had whistled at me as I was driving down the street. So, I stopped. And he said she he, she got in the car with me in the game. And she told me to drive out to the woods. So, I did. Uh, I thought it was like a taxi service game. And um, it was uh, simulating sex in the game. And no. Yeah, and he he had some questions about it, and so what did you like? Did he ask like why the car was bumping up and down? What'd you tell him? Well, he kind of insi- like he kind of knew what it was. He's like, I noticed the car was moving around, and she was moaning, and he's like, I noticed I'd heard my mom do that before. So he's like, I've seen what my mom and my dad used to do. 
before they got the divorce, and I noticed it was in the game, so it kind of like made me wonder if that's what my parents always did. And you know, I read the card and I, I got a hold of them, and I was like, "Yeah, that's that's what your parents uh, do when they want to have sex." And he's like, "So my dad goes out on the on the road and, and gets a, a lady," and I was like, "No, no, 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 that was a, a prostitute." And he's like, "What's that?" Well, and that's when you referred him to that old biblical verse. Um, yeah, it's better to put your seed in the belly of a whore than it is to uh, scorn your wife. What? Yeah. Oh no 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 no, no that was it. That no. was it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember it now. It's uh, it's be- it's better to uh, s- put your seed in the belly of a whore than it is to spill your seed. That's the gist of it. What does that have to do with prostitutes? Basically, what it means was instead of him masturbating constantly like he's been doing, he needs to go find a, a prostitute. How do you know he was pulling his pud? Hmm? How do you know he was pulling his pud? Next subject. So we're back at the Dave and Buster's. We're about 10 grand deep. It's It's getting uncomfortable. We are full of uh, their appetizers. Uh, what what were those? Those mini burgers with the chicken nuggets. Mini on them? barbecue sliders. Mini barbecue sliders. We had them uh, with the with the mac and cheese on it. You had the barbecue chicken pizza. So we ran up a tab, probably about uh, at least sixty bucks. At least sixty bucks plus the five grand or ten grand that we've spent on this game. At one point, the manager of Dave and Buster's gets so distraught of, of us trying to win this PlayStation 2. Like, we are in a deep flop sweat. We mm-hmm. are in a deep flop sweat, sweat because we're we're thinking, how are we going to explain this to the church? They're not going to believe us. They're thinking, like, why don't you just get on the internet and find one? They don't know. They don't. They're in, they're, they don't know the internet. They might as well just be investors at this point. Like, they're like, oh, oh I got to save money. Ooh. Dad left us plenty of money. Like plenty. Benny we could buy brings five, the Benjamins. Five to eight PlayStations if we really wanted to go nuts with it. We could have one in every room. You know, at the end of the day, what if, and hear me out, me and my brother just wanted to have a nice fun trip to a Dave and Buster's out of town. So, manager finally comes over to us like, "Boys, uh, you've put enough money in this game to pay it off. Uh, I'm just going to break open this case and I'm going to let you have this game." And so we said, "No, we're not taking it. Mm-hmm. We're going to win it fair and square." Benny raised us better than that dude. Yeah, Benny raised us better. Benny raised us better. better. So we put another five, six grand in, in at least. At least. So we have horrible hand-eye coordination. It it did not help that. The only hand-eye coordination we had growing up was taking my eyes and putting them on that Bible and taking this hand and opening it up. Uh, who needs to play Tetris when you have the Bible, Bible. to open up and read? Dun, 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 dun. Go to hell, we're reading the Bible oh, now. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. so who needs Tetris? Tetris. Tetris. It it comes to closing time. Dave and Buster's is finally shutting down. It's about one fifty nine a.m. They walk up to the boys. Uh, we we gotta we gotta shut down. Uh, sorry. So we, and I mean we had we told them we said we got nowhere to go. We we flew into this town and Ubered here. And they just said, uh, sorry, that's not really our problem. It seems like you have plenty of money to spend on a hotel. And, and, and we did. I mean, and I had to lash out at them. I had to let them know. Uh, you and your Mr. Mr. You, Mr. Manager. Uh, if that is your real name. How are we going to explain spending the night in a hotel room to our church board? 
with no PlayStation to plug into the TV. So he said, once again, he turns around and says, Sir, I will call the cops. This is not my problem. You need to leave. Mm-hmm. We didn't get our PlayStation 2. This is, this can go on record. This is a story that uh, I think the church board should listen to. And I think it it can tie it back into the Bible. It You know, mm-hmm. gambling is a sin. Mm-hmm. And this game that we're playing, I think it was basically gambling. Mm-hmm. So it was a life lesson for us. And I think that through this, through this, we can actually use what we learned through this entire trip. We can give back to the church a different way. Yep. And I mean, I think to wrap it all up, I think we, we you know, the Bible verse, uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy 6.10 for the love of money is the mm, root of all one. kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and perceived themselves with many griefs. And that was us at Dave and Buster's. That was us at Dave and Buster's. Mm-hmm. I will say that we had, we did have a few tickets left over. And uh, currently, me and my brother Danny are stuck in a Chinese finger trap. Help. Help us. Help us, please. We got stuck. So anyway, the Boy Scouts, am I right? Ooh, ooh. I don't know if I want to touch that subject this episode. Too hot. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I think you got to know a little bit about me and my brother, Denny. Uh, on next episode, I think we're going to play a little game called Prayer or Poems. And uh, Denny here, I think you have one last verse for us to carry us out. Uh, for the day, one uh, a daily verse for those people in need. Let's see what you got. Okay, we are going to close out mm. with you know the daily close out Bible verse. Oh wow! And it is Judges mm. four twenty one. You had me at Judges. You don't. I mean, you don't have to say anything, but I want to hear it. Let's hear it. And it starts, but jail. Heber's wife picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. And that's it. I feel uplifted. I think it really gives you uh, an idea of how quick things can happen and how quick things can change on you. I'm, you know, I'm going to take that with me today. I'm going to take it home with me. I'm going to ponder on it, and uh, I think it's going to help. It's going to lift the evil. It's going to lift the spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's it for this episode of To Heck in a Handbasket. Uh, please join us next time. We are brothers, and we are brothers in Christ. Christ.